Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading, the February 3rd free weekend video. That's me. I have at least six screens in here. I like having more, and I'm probably going to add a couple more in here. Just to let you know, I think it's really important to have a lot of charts up here because I could scroll through a bunch of different charts all day. But this way, I'm glancing at the charts, and you could see something as it occurs. Now, just to let you know, Brecher Trading isn't just about day trading. Even though I do a chat at least two hours a day, these are a lot of the trades we've done, or I've done, it this year. I just want you to look at these. And these are swing trades. These have done pretty well. Just go and check these out. And you're going to notice that most of them worked. Now, obviously, the market went up, but that's why I didn't show short ideas. The, uh, the only short idea I showed, I mean, that I really hated was that. Look at that bear flag. So if I see a lot of bear flags, I'll point them out to Brecher Trading. The problem is there hardly are any bear flags. In fact, there's like two. So you'll see in here, L-O-P-E, there's a bear flag for you. H-E-L-E, there's a bear flag for you. But what happens in, in this type of market is you start getting some negative divergences in the broad market, and usually there are stocks that sort of bring up the rear, so to speak, and are already showing relative weakness. As you see in here with the ESs, when the ESs are up in these zones, I'm not show, finding that many bearish ideas, but what usually happens is you first start seeing some bearish five-minute ideas. Then you start seeing some bearish 15-minute ideas. Then some bearish hourly ideas. And then those two I showed you, L-O-P-E and H-L-E-L-E, you start seeing some bearish daily ideas. The problem is there aren't that many daily ideas now. But let me just show you on the bottom, on all my longs. And just keep in mind, what do they have in common? The best ones are the ones that broke out of a base and had very little resistance overhead. That's why when I was doing a scan now of oil stocks, which will be in the premium video, I see a lot of oil stocks that look like this, but do you see all the resistance here? That's why it's very difficult. You might make money in them, but they might stick here and be very frustrating for you. The key is if it gets over that, and that's uh, what I, I have a list of them for the premium side. But to recap about this week, ESs, unchanged on Friday, believe it or not. And as you see, they got to this zone in here. Now, one thing I want to tell you in here is, like I said about swing trades and overall market perspective, I just want you to look at this right here. That is my crazy ideas for 2019. This is just one of them. And it's the SPX works off all the negative sentiment and the monthly oversold conditions by doing the exact opposite the most expect. Now, just to let you know, there was a, a rebalance on December at the end of December. I warned about that earlier in the month and said probably the day after Christmas would be the bottom. That was the bottom. Big old buy imbalance in there and has to do with monthly 50-50 funds that have to rebalance their portfolios. So just keep that in mind. The other thing is to watch sentiment. I post this on the site, and also I usually post it after the fact of on stock tweets and Twitter. But basically in here, we had a tremendous amount of bullishness, of bearishness. See that bearishness right there? And as you see this week, it started to get better. I look at the American Association of Individual Investors, which comes out Thursday, and I compile this from stock tweets. As you see, it went from the 26 to real bearish that it's getting less bearish. I mean, it's still a little too negativity. So that's why I don't think we're going to have any crack. You have to understand the big cracks in October and December this year of last year were, uh, were preceded by extremely bullish readings. This time they were real bearish. That's why we've been looking for long ideas. Let's keep that in mind and not just day trades. Now, I'm on during the day. I was a market maker for eight years in the IBM pit and CBOE. I love day trading. I've done an entire year where I was flat every night at the end of the day. But when it's the right time, I'll do swing trades. Give, uh, you know, definitely understand that. 
And the key in there is January, beginning of January, there were swing trades to the long side. Now they're getting to where you got to be careful in here. So you got the ESs here and go look at an hourly chart. This is what bugs me. I see the rally. Obviously, you see the rally, but you're starting to see a lot of times when I see these three little things, see this sort of cycle here? Those are showing waning momentum. That does not mean to short. What it means is a warning sign. So what you get in here is you get these rallies on lower momentum. This is the MACD. I have an entire learning video on how I use the MACD. I also have a learning video on how to use the ATR trailing stop. I'm not going to think of shorting this market until I see a break of the ATR trailing stop. And then usually that first break creates too much of an oversold. It's then how it works off the oversold condition. And that'll dictate if I'm finding a lot of shorts if I or I'm going to stay long. Now, just to let you know, a lot of the leading stocks like the CSIQs really had a bad day on Friday. Look at that. That took back a lot of candles. Now, this has been a leader, as you see, and the theme you're going to see on our premium site is a lot of stocks that got too extended from their bases. That's what starts happening. Obviously, it got over overbought, but see this overbought? Remember I told you it's how it works off its overbought condition. It worked it off beautifully by going to the zero line and holding this support. That's a beautiful entry. There were a ton of stocks that did that, and I pointed it out a lot. Those weren't day trades. Those were longer-term trades. The problem I have with CSIQ now is go into settings, whether you use trading views, stock charts, think or swim, and look at the volume on the sell-off compared to the rallies. So I'm getting a little cautious. That doesn't mean to short it. What it means in here is if I was trading it shorter term, you use the ATR trailing stop to get yourself out right here. Now, you might be like, well, you got out here. You missed the move. Well, that's not necessarily true. So what happened is it's a buy when it breaks that. So if you bought on the way up here, you're out here. You get back in here. Now you're out again. That's a nice move. A lot of sites have like arbitrary 20% stops on things. I saw people that had stops in COUP, and they said to buy it here and have like a 20-point stop. I mean, you'd be busted out from the business. A lot of what we do is initiation. So if you were buying COUP down here, you're out here, and then you get back in on the opening that day. That would have made you an extra 12 points. So I try to teach you about initiations. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, when I go over the overall indexes, and let me just revisit them, all of them look moderately the same, where they all have this big rally December 26. That was when the rebalances started. They're getting in this congestion area, but you don't really see signs of a long-term reversal yet. Now, what does a long-term reversal look like? There are two of them. Go back to the ES, not the NASDAQ, and look at this doji with a follow-through day. Doji, close to a doji, with a follow-through day. We might have a doji in here in some indexes, especially something like the SPX that's non-24-hour. But we don't have the follow-through day. It just as much could follow to the upside. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to be watching that very carefully. Obviously, I'm watching this. We had an indecision candle. That's not a doji, but an indecision candle. Followed by this. So now you see that if this breaks in here, sorry about that candle. If that breaks and gets down to here, it's probably going to do a follow-through candle on a daily. So it's something to watch extremely carefully, and we need to tighten our stops. Now, of all the indexes I watch, the one that has the most topping pattern in here is the NASDAQ. Now, Amazon disappointed. Apple and Facebook were fine. Netflix sort of disappointed. Didn't do much. The key in here is if that breaks. And we have Amazon this week. Like I said, this is a triangle. Respect the break in either direction. Just like back here. Now, as you notice, what's the difference between this and this? On this one, you had no negative divergence. You just got overbought. This one's a little different because now you have this, like I said, 
If this breaks, it has very little support down to here. Now, I'm not saying it's going to that. It's an if-then. But definitely respect the break in either direction, and that's uh, what we're watching. Now, just to let you know what I'm doing on uh, the premium video, and actually, I'll show you. So I'm actually doing this. I'm doing an index and futures overview. And I'm doing an equity overview. That way, if you only trade futures, you only have to look at the futures. I go over oil, bonds, the dollar, gold. I'm going GDX. I'll go over them all. So just to let you know, it's a lot more intensive than what you're hearing here. Now, just to let you know, Brecher Trading, we have the $5 10-day trial. You can, uh, you can just try it out. It includes this, the Ask Me Anything. I usually do this at least once a month. We're from uh, on Thursday from 7 to 7.30 p.m. I'll answer any questions you have about the market. Somebody already emailed me a question about, can you just go over what calls and puts are? I'm like, of course, that would be great. You know, we have advanced, we have inexperience. I want people to succeed at this. We're not a revolving door. We, I have one of the highest retention rates in the whole industry. So I really care about you learning and making money at this. This is what I do all day. I trade and I jump on the chat all day if I see something to do. The minimum is an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. On the third Friday of the month, I do at least three extra hours. So you're going to see in here, I'm on from in the morning and in the afternoon. But I, like I said, I jump on all the time. I do morning ideas. They've been working really great. And I show futures ideas, chart ideas. Whatever I think is relevant goes in here. If you can go back and look at them, they've been pretty spot on. The other thing I do is uh, videos. I do three types of videos. I do a nightly video, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I then do the weekend video that I just showed you the templates for. And I also have learning videos. And in these learning videos, they're free. You don't have to pay extra. I, do a, I did a special intraday uh, video of these two. I went in there and just during the day, I saw stuff to do and I thought I'd show how to do it. So I just recorded it and put it under learning videos. I did one on open interest, my favorite chart patterns. I showed the Ask Me Anything because there were so many great questions. A lot of people wanted me to put it on the site so they could refer to later. How to even set up TweetDeck. I like things that are free and a TweetDeck is free. And then you go to the second page and you get some really good ones in here. You get the ATR trailing stop, the MACD, how to use stock twitch sediment, and my thinkorswim settings. So I hope you can take us up on the $5 trial. They've been working, like I said, it's, it, it's a really active site. We have a very active chat room. It's a lot of fun. It's especially fun if you're making money, no doubt about it. And it's a great learning experience. So thanks for listening to this video and have a great rest of the weekend. Take care.